Well, it's been a while since the political youngins were assembled here. The conservatives Mississauga Jewel, Stella Ambler, you know her, of course, is joined by someone new for the rookie, or are we Soma for or secondary panel, uh, the NDP's Toronto Beaches MP, Matthew Calway, and a member of that most exclusive club in the Commons, one of only two Liberal MP rookies, Ted Shue Kingston. Welcome to you all. Uh, I want to go around just quickly on this thing, because we are marking the end of your first year as elected MPs, and uh, I always like to get a little thought or two from you on how the highs and the lows. Ted, what was the best thing about it, and what was the worst thing about it? Well, I think some of the best things were uh, being able to help out, for example, a small business in my writing by working with uh, a minister, being able to work across party lines to do that, uh, being able to help a family with an immigration problem with a creative, uh, a creative suggestion. And I would say that one of the worst things is, is asking questions and getting an ideological answer or getting a non-answer or just getting a lie sometimes. It is called question period, not answer period, as you know. Stella, what's I the good and the bad and the ugly? Well, um, I think the uh, best part about it is being part of a team and the, you know, the class of 2011 that, that brought the uh, majority government to uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper and the Conservatives. So that's, uh, that's a big thing uh, for me. But uh, you know, also uh, being able to, to serve my constituents in Mississauga South has been um, very rewarding, challenging at times, but you know, a lot of fun. In terms of the lows, it would have to be um, you know, maybe missing, missing my son's hockey games and, uh, oh, okay. and those types of things, and not being able to be home when I want to be, that sort of thing. I'll ask you one thing before you move on. Uh, you were the designated NDP basher today in the House of Commons. Oh, you is noticed that, that? Is that something yeah. you signed up for, too? <laughs> uh, well, speaking yeah. of ideology, Ted mentioned, um, I think there are fundamental differences, and uh, you know, Canadians did elect us for certain reasons. I believe we do have a mandate to uh, to fulfill. So I just always thought you were such a nice person. You seem like you were. I tried to. I tried to deliver it in a nice way. All right, Matthew. What do you? <laughs> it's shocking as we see all these people, you know, these lovely conservative MPs stand up and take their shots uh, and engage in this kind of uh, partisan activity in the House. It's very disappointing. But anyway, there we go. So uh, partisan. <laughs> hi. Uh, um, yeah, it's very gratifying uh, being back in the constituency when you can help on casework. Um, it's uh, been gratifying. I wouldn't say it's a high because no one likes to see the government of Canada um, misleading Canadians, but it's been very gratifying actually that all our persistence on the F-35 is uh, paying dividends. We knew this thing was going to go off the rails and we kept at it and I think we're only frankly at the beginning of a truly ugly story. Um, I also organized with the City Institute at York University an expert summit on urban economies about three weeks ago, which I hope will be the start of putting a deep and comprehensive urban agenda together for uh, Canada, for our mm -hmm. cities. In terms of lows, uh, obviously losing Jack last summer uh, was um, a huge um, setback for all of us personally and, uh, and as a caucus. Um, but you know, part of the high is seeing Tom take that seat, and we we look forward to to great times ahead. And I would echo Stella too. This is a hard job on families. I got three kids at home, and you miss a lot when you're here. Absolutely. I want to move along, uh, and I'll go to the F-35s because uh, I'm kind of reluctant to go there because I never really sense a whole lot of new things. But some new things are coming out. The parliamentary budget officer is now saying he officially feels he's been uh, misled, at least by some of the numbers. Documents appear to be rewritten. Australia's delayed by. Uh, by a couple years, it's by, so the jet fighters, uh, buyers are getting antsy, including ours, and that, that's what brings up what I find interesting. Ron Ambrose, uh, your Minister of Public Works, is saying that the shipbuilding contract that was used quite successfully last year to have put in motion up to $36 billion worth of ships will be the template for this. Now, the, what gets me about that one is you need competition for that kind of a format to work. Uh, you're, the, you're the procurement uh, expert on this thing. I, do you think the government's finally realized they've got to go back on square to square one and start this thing over? No, uh, they haven't realized all they've done is uh, they've, they've named a new uh, office, call it a secretariat, and I think they've realized they can't name it the F-35 secretary. That doesn't look good, but that's what it is, and this is the path they seem to be uh, going down, uh, and, and they don't seem to be letting up on that. But the decision's been made. I mean, there's mul you know, what the AG's report showed was there have been multiple decision points, and every time they've gotten deeper and deeper into the F-35. Ted? 
I, I don't think they've, they're serious about doing a, a competition. Uh, you know, the way I look at it is it's like uh, in the, you used to buy an airplane ticket. You, you see, oh, there's an airplane ticket for $200. And then you make a decision to buy it. And then you find out, oh, there's all these fees and taxes. It's really $290. Well, this is the same thing, except instead of making a decision to buy an airplane ticket, you put an election in the middle. So Canadians were misled uh, during that election. That's, that's why Canadians need no. to be upset. Just to say, Stella, go ahead. No, uh, really, what we're, what we're absolutely committed to and very serious about is making sure that we get the best possible plane um, for, uh, to meet our future needs. And um, you know, it probably will be the F-35. Um, but uh, what, what, that's why we wanted to make sure that we do have that fair procurement process. That's why it's now at Public Works. Um, that's why there's a seven-point point plan to deal with it today. Um, the parliamentary budget officer uh, said that uh, the Department of National Defense didn't give him the numbers he wanted, but you know they're working um, with accepted practices, practices that have been used for decades. Uh, so when the Auditor General then told us that we those weren't the the, um, the standards that we were to go by any longer, we said, fine, we're going to take that recommendation, and we will. Okay. So I want to move along uh, uh, to Conrad Black. The uh, media uh, magnet is coming home, uh, perhaps as early as tomorrow. Uh, the New Democrats in particular, Matthew, have been quite feisty, British criminal, special treatment. Uh, what makes you think that? Well, he is a British citizen. He's not a Canadian citizen. He's, he's in jail. Um, he's being convicted. He's an unrepentant criminal. Uh, to get someone in those circumstances into this country require exceptional circumstances. I don't know what they are. I look at the TV one night, and he's talking about wanting to come to Canada. The next day, it's like that. I, I have a constituent. I've got many constituents uh, in these circumstances. I've got a constituent who's a refugee in this country because she worked for, on women's issues in Afghanistan for the United Nations. She's got two young daughters left in that country and a husband, and it's delay after delay after delay to pull those kids kids out of a very dangerous situation uh, and bring them over here. It, it's yeah. terrible. Uh, that's no doubt. That's a sad situation. You're not comparing apples and oranges. This is, but I think really the bottom line is and that you need to, that C Canadians need to understand is that this isn't a political decision. So we can sit around and talk about what we think should happen or not. Uh, it's that, that would simply be our personal opinions. What, I mean, there are bureaucrats with, uh, um, you okay. know, Ten public seconds. servants with years of, years of experience who are making these kinds of decisions. And if you think it should be done some other way, then we should hear okay. about that. Ted, how to Ten do seconds. It. But Everybody has to wait in the same line. That's all I would say. Oh, okay. Good. That's actually three seconds. I'm yeah. happy about that. Thank you all. Appreciate that. We'll see you next week.